Naomi with Sword and Steel and today we're going to be doing another store tour of Sword and Steel, the retail store. It's been over six months since I did the last one, so people have been asking for an updated look of what I have. And today, and all the way until the end of June, I've got a couple sales going on, 15% off all Warhammer, as well as a buy one, get one 50% off of Bolt Action, Star Wars Legion, Warlock Tiles and Terrain Crates, Flames of War, and Battlefield in the Box Terrain, because I need to make space for some new things, like the new Horse Heresy needs some to go somewhere, and uh, I'm hoping to get in some more paints in the future. So I need some space, so if you can help me out, or you have any interest in any of the items that you see in the video, make certain to message me with this email. And uh, if not, you can check out the video and see if there's anything that you might like me to do a review on. I am always working on something. We have Hobby Paints by Vallejo, various color sprays. They go on quite smoothly, I found. And primers down at the bottom. We also have the AK Interactive paints of various colors. They are also smooth. Uh, they also have the extreme metals and the weathering pencils. And then back to the Vallejo are the model air colors. Everyone. And the Panzer Aces for model washes. And we have the regular army painter war paints and tones and older metallics, along with all of the army painter tufts and their sprays. We also have all of the, I know there may be spaces, but I filled those. We have all of the new air paints by army painter, which I really like, the new speed paints and some varnishes for airbrushing, as well as various starters, including the very handy wet palette down below for Citadel. We have these sprays in various colors as well as the varnish, and Citadel, I have every paint, every paint they currently have created. The metals, and the layers, and the bases, and the washes, the texture paints, and the technical paints, and the air paints, and the dry paints, and all the primers. And here is our line of model color for Vallejo, and game air by Vallejo, which are nice. And for Turbo Dork, we have everything every single paint that they make. I will continue to have every single paint that I make, if at all possible, I think. I really like these. They're not so easy to get through the airbrush, but they are worth it when you do. The Airbrush Premium line by Ballet, who is also another lovely line I have for Turbo Dork and for this line. I have videos that add them to the description and how you can use them. I have smaller surface primers in the 60 models. I've got metal colors and weathering effects and pigments. The pigments are really nice for dusting up your miniatures um, with to match the textures. I have mecha airbrush primers and larger surface primers. Um, the airbrush flow improver, the airbrush thinner, various varnishes and super glues, Tamiya paints, as well as the Tamiya panel line accents and super glue activator, the various Tamiya glues, as well as the plastic putty by Vallejo. I also have these Iwata airbrushes, as well as the accessories for replacing them. I have all of the Vallejo stencils for airbrushing and the Vallejo tufts, rock molds by Woodland Scenics. So you have all sorts of different varieties of rock molds, which are really useful for creating dioramas and also useful for creating dioramas. There are all of these uh, woodland scenic turfs and some army painter flocking, as well as the hot wire foam cutter down there. I have a magnifier with four different lenses by Leo for putting on your head so that you can paint your miniatures with a magnifying glass hands free. And also this funky little guy for holding your miniature steady as you're trying to paint the face. I have, I believe, every single Vallejo tool. They've created some really nice file sets for metal or resin models. 
and anything else that you would use file sets, particularly these curved file sets for resin models. I have painting tape of various thicknesses, uh, the Army Painter Masterclass dry brush set is really nice, some pipettes, various paint brushes, modeling and sculpting tools, this Lee and Hardy brush set, which is a very nice set of paint brushes. I've talked about this before, the Army Painter lasers, they are great for line of sight, and there are various other tools that I have that you might find useful. For Gamer's Grass, as I said, I have every single tuft, but I also have various bases that are resin and either pre-painted and tuft or completely bare for you to pre-paint and tuft yourself. Uh, various other tools. Just ask and I probably have it, including the Citadel ones and these new laser plants by the uh, Gamer's Grass. For Warhammer, let's start with Necromunda. I have a bunch of different Necromunda kits and also terrain kits and all of the books that you need to play uh, various armies in Warhammer 40,000 and the starter kits like the Recruit Edition and Elite Edition and Command Edition and one copy of Undomitus left and the various paints and tools and paints and miniatures and Space Marines. I've got all the combat patrols and flyers some Forge World models besides that, the various HQ among the di different chapters of the Space Marines, getting into Dreadnoughts and Primaris Space Marines, some Speth Wolves and Blood Angels material and Dark Angels and Black Templars and various tanks and whatnots, a little bit more Space Wolves stuff, more things that I could not fit, which is why you need to help me. And here is a uh, Forge World um, Assault Drill, which you can actually also use in Horus Heresy, new combat patrols of Custodes, Adeptus Mechanicus, units of all varieties, and Astra Militarum units, more Adeptus Custodes units, some Inquisition models, some Contemptor Dreadnoughts, a Sisters of Silence, Eisenhorn in back there, because I like Eisenhorn. We have Sisters of Battle, some old uh, pieces of Sisters of Battle if you like that, and various tanks of the Astra Militarum hiding back there. And of course, the blisters of Assassins and Astro Militarum and a random Jokero Weaponsmith and Space Wolves and uh, Grey Knights and Space Marine units of various kinds. Uh, what's on top isn't necessary, what's behind, I've run out of space. Um, and uh, you could even find in back, like this guy, this is an old Mephiston Lord of Death. In our Xeno section, some small range of Harlequins and Drukhari and older uh, Dado cards, Apocalypse, a whole bunch of Eldari of various kinds, a whole bunch of Tau, so many different Tau. I more than likely have it. It's more likely that I have it than I don't have it. I have too many books too many books for the amount of space that I have. I'm going to redo this bookshelf at some point. I really like the look of the bookshelf, but it's not carrying enough books. I need to make my own bookshelf, I think, in the future. For Necrons, I have most everything in Necrons currently made, besides Forge World models, I suppose. An Overlord, a Cryptek, uh, this fella. Above the Necrons are the Knights, Imperial Knights, Grey Knights, Blackstone Fortress items, Warhammer 40k Risk, and Urban Conquest, and Shadow Throne, stuff like that. Above the rest of it is Battle Forces, so when Aliens, Aliens board game, which I really like, a Chaos Spice Marines of various varieties. In the corner is our Thousand Suns section. The Death Guard, 
and some defilers. And I might not show here, but I know I've restocked the um, Blight Lord Terminators. There's a older Nurgle Demon Prince. Some orcs. Orcs, 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 orcs. And hiding in here is a Forge World Colossal Squig. Probably shouldn't be there, but I shall tuck it in there anyway for the moment. Uh, lots and lots of orcs. And some battle forces for orcs. Some of the battle forces for the orcs were there too. Tyranids. Oh, the various Tyranids. And a sm very smaller, much, much smaller section of the Gene Stealer cults with the Tyranids. Above is our new section of the Chaos Knights. And now we get into Kill Team. Kill Team all the way up to the top. As well as... Uh, Morok and Octarius, since I could not fit them both there yet. For Warhammer Age of Sigmar, we have death. Various death. And vampires and Osiric Bone Reapers and Night Hunt. And I need to restock it. And over here are blisters for various chaos. Mostly corn. Lots of corn. Priests and whatnot. And Slanesh models. Some Slaughter Brutes. Some corn. Blood for the blood of cud. Let's go for the skull throne. And up here we have Slaves to Darkness and the Beginnings of Zinch. And a wee bit of Nurgle. Above we have Beasts of Chaos and Mord Zinch and very little Skaven. I need to restock the Skaven. Various box sets. Uh, destruction, so Ogre War Clans and Mega Gargans and the uh, newer Orcs and Gloom Spike Kits and more specialty kits. And in order, we've got Cities of Sigmar and Seraphin and Daughters of Cain, Lumineth and Sylvaneth. Fire Slayers were in there too. Adonith, Deepkin, Caradron, Overlords, of course, the Stormcast Eternals, as well as a Above various two player kits and battle forces. That's for Age of Sigmar, but also technically also for Age of Sigmar or Warcry. We have all these various Warcry kits and Age of Sigmar terrain. I stuffed the Warcry as tightly as I could and so I could fit this actually. So I could fit these underworlds. Some of them are out of print, some of them are not. But if you're looking for Underworlds, I have it. And for Blood Bowl, little little second for Blood Bowl. Some more uh, Age of Sigmar terrain kits. Uh, Age of Sigmar corn battle mats. It's definitely long out of print, I think. Uh, Lord of the Rings, my wee Lord of the Rings section with the Balrog. And Winged Nazgul and ruins of various places in, in the realm. For Dungeons and Dragons, I've got 5th edition. Manuals of most every type. I also have this basic fantasy role-playing game books. You can get the PDFs free online, but if you were looking for um, them in actual printed form, then uh, then here they are in both paper and uh, hardcover. If you enjoy classic fantasy Dungeons and Dragons, I think you would really like that because it's really tidily done. Inspir inspired entirely by that version of Dungeons and Dragons. Various tiles and old books long out of print. And some old Marvel comics magazines long out of print. A couple PHBs for 4th edition, a PHB for 3.5. Another, a few little manuals for 4th edition as well. For Dungeons and Dragons miniatures, I have unpainted and pre-painted, whatever suits your fantasy. I enjoy the unpainted ones. They come in uh, generally in kits of two for the smaller ones that you can have two different models depending on what you are fancying. Or if you're brand new, you could paint one and fail miserably and then paint the other one and a lot better. These are $6 miniatures. They're Dungeons and Dragons pre-painted miniatures from a variety of different sets over the ages. We have new, we have old. These ones are $12 miniatures. Again, 
new old from the ages of D&D miniatures. These are $20 miniatures. I enjoy miniatures. Can you tell? I, I think it might be pretty evident. Rare pewter miniatures. More $6 miniatures. And no, I can't say they are amazingly painted, but pretty good. You know, for a $6 miniature. I'm just comparing it to Warhammer miniatures. The old miniatures are pretty well painted, and so are some of the new ones too. And of course you can paint them over yourself. $12 miniatures, I actually find that they take, the, these pre-painted miniatures take paint pretty well. These are unpainted but pre-primed miniatures, just taken out of their boxes and sold individually at $4 each. And various unpainted Wiz Kids miniatures. Also some old, uh, older Wizards of the Coast Dungeons and Dragons books and various other fantasy books that I haven't parted with yet. Some old Magic the Gathering books as well. And various models that you can go to town with painting. These are super fun to paint. They don't have an incredible amount of detail, but they have a detail enough that you can enjoy yourself as you're painting. And it won't take very long at all to paint them. Particularly if you use transparent paints. Inks and contrast paints. Things like that will make your painting go super quickly. And then dry brush perhaps afterwards, particularly if you're dry brushing metals. Terrain crates, which are fantastic uh, little resources for filling out your Dungeon Dragons table or your Warhammer table. These are Battlefield in the Box kits. They are terrain pieces that are painted exactly as what you see on the box. So you just take them out completely assembled, all ready to go, right out of the box. These green ones, the ones that have green on them, um, have the green separate, so that you don't necessarily have to have uh, green flocking on them, it's whether you want to put them on or not, is entirely up to you. Now, for Star Wars Legion, we've got Empire. Um, I'm getting in the new Star Wars Legion models, they're on the way now, so if you're looking for the new Star Wars Legion releases that is coming up soon, I will be getting those in as well. And Rebels. Various Rebel boxes. Republic boxes. Just ask if you're looking for something in particular. I may have it stogged away somewhere. For Flames of War, I have very many blisters. So much so I could not put them in the film, um, simply because it would have taken too long to go through all of them. I have that many. So just ask. I have, uh, I, I can note them all down for you if you tell me which army you might be interested in. And yes, there are old pewter miniatures that may not or may be available now. I have so many various if you're looking for anything in particular, just ask. Also, so a small amount of Team Yankee stuff. Mostly Flames of War, World War II items, but some just Team Yankee. Not part of the sale is would be anything that I'd have to get into special order for you, since I'm looking to free up space. That's what the sale is all about. But if you uh, were looking for something in particular, I have no problem ordering it in and sending it off to you. Now for bolt action, a larger scale World War II miniature game. We have Germans and we have allies, various models, various starter kits. Uh, we have all the books I believe that you should need. Uh, we have Soviets and we have Japanese. We have Band of Brothers. Four dice. We have a grand amount of dice. D6s in 12 sets and in 3060 sets. And multiple various Dungeons and Dragons dice. As in seven sets dice of various types. As well as sleeves and duck boxes and binders for magic card sized 
cards as well as Yu-Gi-Oh card size stuff. We have epic encounters. I'm getting on all of the various epic encounters that I'm missing as well. Paint sets. Horus Lupercal bookends. These very useful battle mats. These cutting mats. Yu-Gi-Oh! Of various kinds. And a dragon. Various boosters. Magic the Gathering have all kinds of different sealed products from Magic the Gathering, boosters and commander decks and booster boxes, and old anthology sets and bundles. I have all sorts of different brushes for you, and even this brush pen, um, which allow you to do pupils with ease, because it's a brush pen that you just poke where you want the pupil to go. I have Da Vinci, and Citadel, and Army Painter, and more beyond that, and some kits. Some larger scale tanks and air plane kits. And that is my store. There may be a couple things that I have kept out of the video simply because I don't know what it would be like to ship swords. So I'm not going to attempt to do it, so I'm afraid the swords that you may have seen in the background are not currently available for sale. But ask away if you had any questions in the comments below, or more particularly, even better, uh, just send your questions uh, to this email. And if there was anything in the video that you didn't quite catch, um, and you would like to have more information on that, again, send the questions to this email, and I can get right back to you. I hope you enjoyed the video, and uh, I will you in the next one which is going to be about um a company called archon studio uh is having a kickstarter and they sent me stuff that i'm very excited to look at because it looks like it's going to be really nice dungeons and dragons terrain so that will be the very next video i'll catch you there bye